Royal Duality, Tales for the Silent Life, Chapter 7 Then there was darkness. The Silent One was now in a supernatural sleep. Only magic would awaken them. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed through the hall of the inn. And a woman burst through the door. She leaves debris and chaos in her wake. The pristine guest room now has bits of wood from the door and shrapnel scattered around. Her magic has reduced the hefty door to pieces. Sorry, is this a private party? Or can anyone join? The catkin maid Nyx enters the room. She is wearing a predominantly white robe. She has green paint on her lower lip and on her eyelids. And she has vibrantly pink hair that is short and unkempt. She also has feline ears on the top of her head and a pink fur tail. She has pale brown skin and freckles on her cheeks. She radiates confidence and poise. Aldora becomes visibly nervous. Serpentus does not. Sorry, invite only. First class mages don't need invites. Didn't you know? That's a vampire thing. <laughs> It'd be rude of me not to introduce myself. The name's Nyx, and the silent one is off limits to you. Let them go, or else. <laughs> or else what? <laughs> you have got to be joking. Oh. Oh, no. Uh, Serpentis? Problem. We should just cut our losses and leave. Nonsense! I'm not scared of this catkin, Aldora. Besides, she's no older than... 40? Barely a kitten in comparison to us. I'm nowhere near 40. Man, you're clueless. Uh, no, but really, Serpentis, you should be worried. She's... she's really strong. Aldora is right. I've been wielding first-class magic since I was a kid. Eldora, I'm disappointed. I thought you said you were going to behave after our last encounter. Listen, go easy on me. I, I, I was barely involved in all of this. Hmm. Putting this one into a supernatural sleep. I'd say you are very involved. A greater deity called me into action. M my hands are tied. Eldora, do you mean to say that this mortal has bested you once already? How disgraceful. No wonder you wanted to ally yourself to Serpentis. As for you, Catkin, how dare you speak to a deity so casually? You must be Ira, the spider deity. Huh, I expected you to be smaller somehow. The arrogance of the living never ceases to amaze me. I do not know why you feel it is your business to interfere, Catkin. But let me assure you, it has nothing to do with you. But it has everything to do with me. We see another woman enter the room. If Nyx is chaos, then Ola, the Inquisitor of the Wizard's Council, is ordered and calm. She wears rich blue and purple robes that are a symbol of her status. She has a large witch's hat that is adorned with stars and moons. She also carries a small book with a sun on the front. She has rich brown-colored skin and amethyst-colored eyes. She wears violet eye and lip paint and has dark purple hair. She has used her magic to silence the chaos that Nyx has caused in the corridor and inside the humble inn room. No one is aware of their presence. Let the silent one go immediately. Uh, Ola of the Wizard's Council? Ira, Serpentis, story time's over. You're going to need to find someone else. I'm getting out of here. Much to Serpentis' despair, Aldora flings herself out of the window and flies off into the night, leaving himself and Ira alone. Good grief. Retreating hastily like a coward. This is- Take it easy now. You're not at full power. And I've exhausted myself with our camouflage. We will not win an encounter in this condition. Aldora's right. The show's over. That doesn't mean we'll come out of this empty-handed. Leave it to me. <clears throat> I've heard tell of you, Lady Witch. Yes, you've caused quite the stir at the Wizard's Council. Oliver was a pupil of mine. He had hopes 
and dreams. He was a wonderful wizard with a kind and caring heart. You prayed on that heart and had your way with him. I will not let your attempts to radicalize the people of this realm go unchecked. Perhaps examine the actions of the Wizards Council first before coming to us with your accusations. He was unhappy before he became one of us, and from what I saw in his mind, that situation was not unique to him. Your practices in the current day are a mockery of the traditions laid out by the Wizards of old. Your money comes from your morally corrupt allies and overworked trainees. It is an affront to those who came before you. I am the Council's Inquisitor. Do not lecture me on its history. It is my duty to examine all of the wrongdoings that led to Oliver's misfortune. There were many, born of arrogance, ignorance, and greed. They have been accounted for and we have taken responsibility for our actions. But you two must take responsibility for your actions, Ira. I gave him certainty and a purpose. And for that, I will gladly take full responsibility. Your counsel sent him to die on a fool's errand and manipulated him as much as I did. You sent him to me like a lamb to the slaughter. She's not going to listen to us, Ola. We need to- Wait, Nix. Let us wake this one first. Easy now, Silent One. Are you fully awake? Good, I'm glad. Now you take it easy. You won't be able to stand yet, but Nix will stay near you. You're no longer in danger. What you have done here is a crime. The Silent One has every right to pursue justice in whatever way they see fit. But before they do, I have something I'd like to ask you about. Ira, you are not in a position to ignore my question. I am also in no mood to answer it, witch. Well, I'd think long and hard about that, if I were you. This room is now sealed with solar magic, as long as I'm in it. And I know this is something you are particularly weak against, both of you. <laughs> the Guardian of Stories and the Panther deity, Neville known as Iondride, have both gone missing. Do you know where they are? I can tell you where they are not, but not where they are. Why should we help? There's nothing in it for us. Helping you is like tying our own noose. You've just committed some pretty grave crimes. Kidnapping, influencing others with magic without consent, attempt to murder. I wouldn't say your chances are looking too good either way, you snake. Ah, ah, ah. But so have you, little catkin. Breaking and entering, destruction of property that doesn't belong to you. Bad habits must die hard for a race of thieves, burglars, and beggars. You take that back. That's ancient history. But the Fae don't care. Cat can have a terrible reputation here. Nearly as bad as vampires. They'll have me over you. But, but, but I'm sure everyone downstairs would believe Clumsy Klein. <laughs> Ola, could he... Without Ola... You'll be whisked off to prison as quickly as we would be. Your fodder for the gutters in this country. Nix, he's goading you. Trying to trick you. To make things worse for yourself. You know how important you are to me. You know you're talented. And I will not let anyone make baseless assumptions of you. Please, protect the Silent One. Leave these two to me. Serpentis, you seem very confident that the local people will take your side. Oh, I know they would take my side. I've been embedding myself into their social circles for years. They would never believe you. And might I add, they would not even entertain a testimony from your catkin friend. But this is a stalemate. You won't let us go, but we won't help you. I request an audience at Wizenak. The home of the Wizard's Council. I... I beg your pardon. Serpentus, what is the meaning of this? Will this work in our favor? Of course it does. I wouldn't suggest it otherwise. Well, Madam Witch? I have no right to refuse your request, as you well know. Splendid! Goodbye, Silent One. Looks like you've been spared. Such a shame. You do have such a nice face. Come along, Ira. Let us speak to the council. 
Do not order me around like a lesser deity. Silent one, you will regret this until your final breath. We will not meet again. Nyx, I am afraid I will need to escort Serpentis and Ira to the council. Can you please look after the Silent One, whilst I sort this out? I am so sorry. I could not know you a little longer, but my duty calls. Farewell. Please stay safe. Sure thing. Good luck, Ola. You're damn lucky, snake. Oh, you poor thing. Are you okay? Come on, let me help you sit up there. You look really pale. There now, you must be really shocked and confused. I'm Nyx, a first-class mage. My friend's name is Ola. As the Inquisitor of the Wizard's Council, it's her job to examine wizarding conduct. Uh, you still look stunned. I'm sure this is a night that you'd rather forget. And you know, I would be thinking the same thing if I were you. Take it from me. Ola will square this away. I don't think the deity trio will bother you again. Eldora isn't too bad on her own, but the others are trouble. A word of advice. I'd not tell your demon buddy about all of this. Yeah, that guy can't do too much to help you out. Unless he can sue them. And even then, I don't think that'd end well for him. <laughs> I should get some sleep. And so should you. Don't worry, it'll be alright now. Oh! Before I go, I should probably mention, a mysterious little one told us about you. They wore some weird old-fashioned white robes, had three big horns, really soft features. Oh, they looked so young and adorable, I wanted to poke their little cheeks. But, I don't know, they seemed really wise, kind of ancient? I know that's vague, but I feel like you'd know them if you saw them. If you ever see someone like that, be sure to thank them, okay? I'll check up on you in the morning, silent one. 